So we all heard the saying, Holy Spirit activate. It's a very trendy saying, but when we think about it in reality, what does it mean to activate the Holy Spirit in our lives? Go ahead, get your Bible, get your pen, get your pad, because we're going to jump into that discussion right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get into what the word means and we get into it without all the unnecessary fluff and things that can hinder our understanding. Well, we're in our Holy Spirit series and we've talked about where the Holy Spirit came from. We've talked about what happened in the fall of man and, and when sin was introduced and God's presence was removed from mankind. We've also talked about uh, how the Holy Spirit made a play in the Old Testament, even with those who were after the fall of man. And then we talked about how the Holy Spirit now interacts since Jesus came and paid the price and re-delivered the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. So now this is the last uh, episode in the Holy Spirit series. And we're going to talk about how do we activate the Holy Spirit in our lives. So let's jump right into scripture so we can get a better understanding. We're going to go to one that a lot of people may have heard. This is Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts 2 38. It reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So like I said, this may be a familiar passage to a lot, or you may not have heard it before, but we're going to break down this scripture to see what it really tells, and we're going to try to get rid of some misconceptions as well as we do so. The first thing that we can note is the Holy Spirit is a gift. So if we think about what a gift is, um, you have to actually be ready to receive a gift in order for you to gain any benefits from it. So, in other words, God is not going to force the Holy Spirit on you. He's going to allow you to make a decision whether you want to receive that gift that Jesus Christ has for us. Another thing that I see that is a first step in activation of the Holy Spirit from this scripture. Peter said, repent. Repent actually means to turn away from or to make a new decision in your lifestyle so we know that sin has been introduced to mankind as we talked about in the previous episode so now we have to decide in our minds to turn away from a life of sin that we were all born into that's one of the first steps in activating the holy spirit in your life the next thing peter said is to be baptized now, we know that John the Baptist was one who really came in and preached this same message. He preached to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he also went and baptized a lot of men. Here in Acts 2.38, it says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And a lot of people take that very, very literally as far as the name. But I think our focus needs to be on what really matters here. If God wanted us to focus on a particular name, Jesus Christ, uh, we know that this text was not written in English when it was first written and presented. So it's not that we should be arguing or bickering over the name that we baptize in, but I think there's a deeper understanding that we have to gain from this passage. In my research, I've looked and seen that when uh, someone says in the name of, in this time period, it could most likely be interpreted as and the authority of. So God was not trying to get us a particular name to uh, say when we baptize, but he was saying 
we need to baptize in the authority that Jesus Christ now has. And this makes perfect sense if you think about John the Baptist and what he already revealed to us. John the Baptist said, I am not the one who shall come and set us free. I'm not the savior. He said, I'm the one who's gonna come before the savior to lay out the foundation. John the Baptist also said, I baptize in water, but the one who comes after me will baptize through the spirit. So he already let us know what the deal was, but what is this authority we're speaking of? What authority does Jesus have to uh, allow us to have the Holy Spirit enter into our lives? Let's look at another scripture and we can see where that authority comes from. Turn with me to Revelation. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. There it reads, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So this particular passage in Revelation can only be talking about one person. There's only one man who was alive, who died, and now is alive forevermore. So we know that's talking about the Christ, our Savior. But this passage also says that he has the keys to death and hell. So what does that mean? When sin was introduced to mankind, and we already discussed, God does not dwell where sin is, but sin came with a cost. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin are death. So since we are born into sin, since we commit sin as we live in our daily lives, the price had to be paid for our sins in order for us to have our slates wiped clean. Jesus came and lived a sinless life and then turned around and paid by him accepting the death punishment that we should accept. So that means he is the one who wiped the slate clean. He's the one who paid the price for us so we don't have to pay it. So now he has the authority to take the punishment of, of death away from us. He also has the authority to introduce the gift of the Holy Spirit. So in Acts 2.38, that is what it means when it says repent, be baptized in the authority or in Jesus' name, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So let's dig a little bit deeper. We know, we know how to get it started, but what does it mean to activate the Holy Ghost in your life? Or what would that look like? Turn with me. We're going to go back to John. And in your spare time, read through the book of John because it has a lot of information about the Holy Spirit just in general. But we're going to look at John chapter 14 and we'll read verse 15 through 17. There it reads, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. So what can we get from this passage? We know the comforter that they're speaking of is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is leaving the Holy Spirit behind for believers that will dwell inside of us. So it's reuniting us with the relationship in God. But what is the first thing it says in verse 15? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So what is activation of the Holy Spirit? It's obedience to God's word. It's obedience to the instruction that God already laid out. That's the best way to activate the Holy Spirit, to obey what God already instructed us to do. And we can take it a step further. Let's, let's go to John chapter 15, and we can take that even a step further and see what specific commandment God laid out for us will help us to activate the Holy Spirit. Let's go to John 15, verse 12 through 15. There it reads, 
This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So this is saying a lot. And this is actually helping us understand what the Holy Spirit is going to do once it's activated in our lives. God is telling you he doesn't want you to be a slave to his word. He doesn't want you just to interact as though he is the master and you're his servant. What he wants is a relationship. He calls you friend. Those who obey his word, they develop a relationship with him. So the Holy Spirit inside of you, and once you activate that, that is a way for you to have a connection or a, a close relationship with God. So we activate that through repentance, obedience, and then a deep relationship with God. Man, this has been one of the best um, topics I think we've had in this study because it opens our eyes to a lot. It helps us understand what the Holy Spirit is. We have been able to uh, erase some misconceptions that we may have taught or may have believed before. And we've actually dug into the word to see what God wants for us in our lives and what the gift of the Holy Spirit is actually for. So I'm glad we were able to go through this study. But let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the revelation you are giving us. We thank you for the truths you are unfolding about the Holy Spirit. We thank you for just this opportunity to come and study your word together and how you're giving us a hunger for your word. We thank you for showing us that you want a close relationship with us. You want to, to really be able to speak with us and impart in us, not as a master and servant, but as friends. We thank you for even allowing us the gift of the Holy Spirit by allowing your son to be a sacrifice for our wages of sin, which is death. Dear God, we thank you for how you are showing how all of this connects with each other. The sacrifice, uh, Jesus Christ coming to be our Savior, the Holy Spirit, the gift that you have placed in us, uh, obedience to your word. All of these things are connected, which will give us a better standard of living. So we ask for strength and courage to stand on your word and to be cleansed vessels that people may see your light shine through us. In Yahshua's precious name we pray. Thank you. It is done. Man, I'm glad we're able to get into this Holy Spirit series. And we're going to start a new series next week. So I hope y'all stay in tune to be able to check out the next series. But until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.